Dr. Josh Hans here, and we're going to go live with episode 141 of Lifestyle Locker Radio. This is the race to 100. This is about transcending. And I want to share a few things with you. I want to share some of the things that I've learned about myself, some things I learned about my training, um, some of the things I learned mentally and physically, what I'm capable of, maybe beyond. So first things first, this week was what we call Speed Week. The week previous or prior to this week, or the couple weeks prior to this week, we hit uh, 59 and change miles in one week, which is great, which was a record for me. This week, distance-wise, I don't even really know. I think maybe five miles of running minus today, Sunday, which is my ruck day where we have our weight over time on a rucksack, combat boots, and so on and so forth. We'll get into some details on that. But transcending, I want to share this definition with you. But first, before I do that, I want to start this episode off with an awesome quote. Okay, so here we go. There is something magical about running. After a certain distance, it transcends the body. Then a bit further, it transcends the mind. And a bit further yet, and what you have before you, laid bare, is the soul. And that's by Kristen Armstrong. It's something that I did find online. And this is powerful. For those of you that have pushed, I don't think this only has to do with running. Running is very powerful because it makes you push yourself beyond what you think you're capable of. Even if you're running your first mile ever, or first 5K ever, or first 10K ever, and you've never done that before, you're transcending. You're like going beyond. And this is super, super powerful for everybody. I mean, me included, and I love it. I love this feeling, and I love doing it on a daily basis when I train mentally and physically because the only limitations that we really put upon ourselves are the ones that are in the five inches in between our ears. And I want to share this definition with you. So I'm going to share, actually, I will not share my screen yet, but transcend. Here is the definition. Actually, I will share the screen. So for those of you that are listening to the audio, you can jump on Facebook Live and watch the video in the future and or YouTube. It'll be there as well. So I want to share my screen. So transcend, to rise above or go beyond the limits of, to triumph over the negative or restrictive aspects of, right, overcome, to be prior to, beyond, and above the universe or material existence. Maybe that's what they're talking about. To outstrip or undo, or excuse me, to outstrip or outdo in some attribute, quality, or power. So this is really, really neat. When you're running, when you're training hard on a regular basis, I truly believe that you're transcending your mind and your body when you start to push those limits. So with Speed Week this week, I changed the pace 100%. I was in the gym, I was indoors mostly, and the majority of the time, and I was running on a treadmill, which is completely out of my comfort zone, I'd rather be on the street, even though I mentioned this last time, uh, actually during some of my Facebook Lives, that I find treadmill running very boring, but it's very, very powerful, because you can train, you can see your distance, you can see your incline, you can see your speed. And I know that doesn't really translate well to the road. But what it does do, it can teach you to keep a cadence, which is that foot momentum, right? And a pace as you're training, which is very neat, very cool. And I think very, very powerful when you actually start to use this as a tool for letting you win, right? For letting you true up, there we go, for letting you transcend. And I think it's powerful that you, when you change your mode of training, your mode of movement, the way you stress your body in a positive way, what can happen is you can rise above. You can go beyond. And just to share, I'm going to go through some of my, my training that I did this week. I have a Google Keep document that I'm going to share with you. And I'm just going to read to those that are listening to the audio you can actually jump on YouTube and or Facebook on my site or into our Lifestyle Locker and check these out. This is really neat. So for Speed Week, what we did, I started off on a Tuesday. So Monday, I'm in my practice, seeing patients, doing what I love to do. And uh, for those of you that know me, I'm 
I'm a I'm not the I'm not a very social person. I love being around people, but I love being able to do things like this. And that's why running I think is so good for for people like myself because I love being with myself and sometimes I'm the hardest person to be with for myself because my mind gets running a million miles a minute. So Speed Week was really neat. Um really wild. So it was all weight training and then sprinting. Um, if for those of you who have never sprinted on a treadmill, it can be exciting. It can be powerful, but I think it could also be dangerous. Not at this current gym I'm at. I've seen people fly off treadmills and it's quite scary, right? They get going too fast. They lose their, they lose their cadence. They lose their pace. They lose their footing. And then they fly off the treadmill, bruised, embarrassed, and <laughs> want to get the hell out of the gym. Um, but what I found, running 60 miles the week before or just under 60 miles, I was not sore. How weird is that? I was not sore almost at all. To me, that blows my mind. But what is more amazing is after day one, right, doing three sets of back squats, you know, 135, 155 pounds, 175 pounds. Those are the three round, rounds I did, or three sets I did. I did 10 reps of those. Then 10 wall balls, for those of you who don't know what those are, that's grabbing a 20 pound medicine ball and I was throwing it up at a t just a, an imaginary 10 foot target on the wall. Um, did 10 of those after. Then I did three sets of what we call dumbbell um, incline press. So I just do a very subtle incline just to break that and use 55 pound dumbbells, 65 and then 75 dumbbell, pound dumbbells. Then three sets of single arm bent over rows, which I don't use an actual bench for stability. I'm using my core for stability. Maybe I'll share a video of that one of these days. Uh, jumping that up to 60, 65, 75 pounds, 10 for each arm, and then 11 rounds. So this was the fun part. 11 rounds of incline sprints, right? So I did a 6.5 to seven incline. I only did 6.5 for the first one or two, and then the remainder, remainder excuse me, of those were at a seven incline. And then I just went from 8.0 increasing by the speed by 0 0.1 until I hit nine. And I walked at a pace at, at you know, 2.0 pace at zero incline until my heart rate dropped below 120. And actually, believe it or not, it was actually dropping closer to 190. And I can tell you, so that was Tuesday. Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then in my practicing facing on Monday morning, I could not believe how insanely sore my body was everything my glutes my hamstrings my quads um i changed my my pattern i stressed my body out so i ended up creating more uh discomfort changed the way my body was moving for weeks of the same momentum right the same positioning running is can be very uh tough on your body in a sense because it's the same plane of motion all the time so by doing this weight training, I changed those planes of motion. So I'm using muscles differently, but I, can, I was insanely sore. And today it's Sunday. I have not, not been sore since Monday. It progressively has gotten more sore and different types of sore and different types of sore. Um, so I just, all I did was ramp it up all week. So then it was Thursday. Uh, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday are all back to back, back to back, back to back days of training. So Thursday was an afternoon day, which was deadlifts for 10 reps each at 185, 205, 225. So hitting different muscle groups than pull-ups, all right? Then 30-pound sandbag slams. If you've ever done those, those are a blast. That's taking that sandbag or uh, like a heavy medicine ball and slamming on the ground and then picking up and slamming on the ground, using your core, using some muscles, get a little you know energy out there. Then doing what I call, I don't even know the name, but I do dumbbell curls. Oh, this is not the set of this, but I do dumbbell curls at 35 pounds, 10 reps each arm, and then push-ups at 25% uh, per set. Um, so I did three sets of all of that. Then the sprints, I changed. So again, I did I did 11 rounds again. I kept the incline at a 7.0, right? I kept the sprints now. The first time um, were 15 second, which I didn't put 15 second sprints. These were 30 second sprints at a pace from 8.5 to 9.5, the same way increasing it 1.0. And I had to let my heart rate drop down again. So I dropped it and let it drop down to the 90s again. Then I went again. I just kept on doing that. So again, Friday morning, insanely sore. 
another three rounds, no, more, more sprinting, right? So I'm really pushing my body in very, very different ways this week, um, which becomes very challenging because my body was so used to this kind of same momentum, this running, you know, one foot in front of the other, which I, I'm feeling I'm getting better at. I'm not the fastest runner, but I'm a very good consistent runner. I keep a consistent pace almost all the time. So the third day, God, since we did squats and deadlifts already this week, we had to do lunges. I actually took a uh, Olympic barbell, like a full barbell, loaded it up with 65, 75, and 85 pounds, and I did lunges, 10 per leg, right? Then after that, um, I did oh, I did Turkish get-ups with 30-pound dumbbells, and I actually, believe it or not, I like the dumbbells, and I did five per arm, per set. I like using the dumbbell better than the kettlebell because I end up wearing a Garmin when I'm training, and the kettlebells would sit right on the Garmin, and I don't feel like breaking an expensive toy, an expensive wash that I use for my data collection. So I love the barbell, or the, excuse me, the the dumbbell for that. It works really, really well. Uh, then the next something is something really cool. For those of you that have a sled in the gym, you, or you may have seen this. These sleds are things you can push across, like a fake astroturf or a gym floor. So we have a, a turf in the in our gym, uh, and I pushed it for 13 yards. Actually, what we did before the push, we have a TRX set up, clipped to it. I have two 45-pound plates on top of whatever the sled weighs, which is a decent amount to start. And I'm facing the sled, so I'll take a couple steps back, and I pull like a row. I squat into a pull. Take a couple steps back, squat, pull. And I'm doing this for 13 yards. If you can think of like a football field, right? So I'm doing this for, for 13 yards, and I throw the TRX on, and I get it back to that same starting point fast as I possibly can. And then I do what we call parallel grip pull-ups. So those are the narrow grip palms facing each other, um, 10 rounds. And I've been doing all of my pull-ups unbroken. And they're strict. They're not kipping. Like for those of you that know CrossFit, I'm not swinging my body back and forth when I'm doing these pull-ups. I'm dropping straight down, pull, pick myself up. And yes, some of them I may move my legs and knees like that help me to smidge, but I'm not swinging back and forth. Um, and then again, more push-ups, unbroken again, 25 per round. And I'm feeling quite excited because with all of the, the training that I've been doing, things have been getting easier. The things I'm doing on a very regular basis, like push-ups, pull-ups, getting a lot easier. I can blaze through tons of push-ups now, like very comfortably, which is crazy. And then so for this, um, I did five rounds of one minute sprints. And what I did for these sprints, let me just click on this one here, right? One minute sprints at, with about 1.5 minutes in between at a 6.0 incline, consistently at 8.0 speed per minute. So I just kept consistency today. I didn't ramp it up and didn't go crazy for that day, excuse me, for, for Friday. So again, it's incredibly sore, incredibly sore. Got to play and hang out with my, my two-year-old nephew, Jack, uh, and my wife and my sister, we got to hang out on our boat that, that day also. So we had a lot of fun time playing around and floating and swimming and all of those types of things. Awesome day. Next day, Saturday. What do we do Saturday? More speed week, more training. So this was an interesting one. I got back into more squats and I was just doing a heavy, I wanted to do heavier squats. For me, I've actually lost significant. I've lost quite a bit of my strength. Um, well, I shouldn't say I've lost all my strength but I've lost some of the strength that I used to have. And I'm okay with this because I'm training for a specific event and a specific event, and I should have specific muscles trained for this event. For instance, if I was gonna be an Olympic weightlifter, I wouldn't be training for a 100 mile run, right? because I'm using muscles in a very different way. So with this Saturday, I did some three set or three rep sets. I did five rounds. I did 155, 185, 195, 205, and 215, which to give you an idea, when I was in, in CrossFit and even after, I was able to squat 265 pounds and 285 pounds for three reps. I don't know if I could even pick that up off the rack today. Well, I'm totally cool with that because I'm not going to thank God be picking up those types of things on a regular basis. At least I hope not. Uh, but then I did some kettlebell swings. This was say 12, 12 swings per set, 30, uh, 30 push-ups per set. And no, I didn't do 30 pull-ups per set. I was doing 10 pull-ups per set. This is just a typo here, which I'm going to change. And the sprints were fun this time, right? Um, I did one-minute sprints, 
at an incline at a pace of 8.5, which was, you know, Saturday was a really hard day to sprint. It was really, really, really hard for me to get my engine going to sprint. Um, I wanted to do two minute sprints, but I thought I was gonna fall off the treadmill like I, like I was telling you earlier, I've seen people do. I got to the point where I had to do it and I had to drop down to a 2.0. I kept the incline where it was and then I just right back at it for uh, you know two minute walk and then crank it up. So this is more time based up and down versus heart rate based. And exhausted, exhausted. So went out on the boat after with a friend, which was great. Got to play in the water, swim around. Um, but I've been going, 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 seeing patients, running, training, and then having fun. And then today, completely tired this morning, got up at 5.30 this morning, and really had to pull myself out of bed. Didn't want to go. I was like, ah, you know what, I could probably take a day off, probably take a day off. And then uh, for those of you who heard me say on other episodes, as well as I've mentioned him on some of my Facebook Lives, one of my uh, mentors... Not a, not someone I know is David Goggins, and love love this guy's inspiration and motivation and all of the things he he shares in in his book Can't Hurt Me. Um, and then I'm also listening to another book now. Her name is Mel Robbins, and she's got a book called The Five Second Rule. And I'm sitting in bed at five thirty, going, oh, "Shit, I don't want to get out of bed." This oh, and then I you know I think I get the Goggins saying, "Get out of bed." get out of bed stay strong that type of thing and then i hear mel robbins going five four three two one get out of bed so the five second rule so i got myself out of bed packed my ruck picked it up go holy crap this thing is heavy and it's already 80 degrees outside it's six o'clock in the morning whatever it was by the time i get ready to get out of the house so i got out of the house at about seven after meditation all the stuff i gotta do get out of the house at seven and I tell myself I'm gonna do a three hour ruck. And boy oh boy, it was hot, sweaty, good. And here's a, here's what blew my mind away, is that as I'm going through the run, I'm going through the run, I'm going through this ruck, I can't, and I wish the, the garment I set up, the way I set it up, it, if I don't set up as a run, it doesn't give me my mile breakdown and uh per mile breakdown but what i did i could not not run so i got this 30 pound ruck on my back and i'm chugging along like up and down up and down going 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 uh ran most of it and uh so i did so i'm wearing combat boots as well so i'm wearing my under armor combat boots blazed through uh, a lot of the streets some of the crazy steep hills that we have in our town and i get to the top of this place called central highway which is this crazy hill, which I've ran over multiple, multiple times. Used to ride bikes over it back in the day. Turn right into the woods and go through what we call High Tour State Park. And I get shuffling like pretty fast, almost at a run through a lot of it. And I'm getting to this one section where it's a, you're getting ready to close to scramble. For those of you who don't know what that means, that's like hands and feet going up, like using both of them to go up. And I see two couples, probably in their mid 30s, maybe late 20s going up nice and gingerly, you know, just in their normal daily clothes. And here comes this guy dressed in all black, hat on, back rucksack, military rucksack, American flag on the back, all the stuff I used to do, wear for my go ruck. And I blaze up this hill, about 80% of it by just still chugging, moving, running. And I was just like so fired up and so amped, uh, amped up. These people like gave me the craziest, absolute craziest look. And I'm just like, ah, let's go, let's go. You know, I'm, I'm talking to myself, of course. And I get up to the top of this mountain, I take a couple of beautiful pictures. And um, then I start my descent and back around. And and uh, man, I feel really, really good. Uh, I was able to run, like run, walk through most of the rest of the trails. Once I got down to a flatter area, I did not want to stumble and fall because it, a lot of them there would be no fall zones. Meaning, if I stumble with this pack on and go over, like there's no ledges, but it's steep. I'm hitting rocks and trees and stuff on the way down. It wouldn't be pretty for for me, um, and there would be nobody there to help me. So I was, I went down a little, a little more gingerly than I ran up. Get down and get some of the flatter hills that are, you know, single track 
start blazing up and down, run, 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 get to the streets, run, walk, run, walk. And, you know, I started to walk a little bit at the end. You know, I'm sweating up a freaking storm, drinking water. And um, what, what got me was I set out to do a three-hour hike, ruck, right? And I could not, and I'm not good with directions or timing or any of these are not my strengths. That by the time I hit my driveway, like three steps into my driveway, I hit that three-hour mark. So I hit the Garmin, turned it off, and holy cow, made it home. So training week was nuts. It was fun. And I'm back to running this week. I'm excited. We're going to do some distance this week. This is my 40th birthday week. So Thursday this week, August 1st, is my 40th birthday. I'm super pumped. Uh, I've decided what kind of run I'll be doing that day. Maybe going out to dinner. I don't know. Maybe doing a little celebrating. Um, but I'm going to push this week because the following week, my wife is taking me on a bucket list trip for myself. Thank you, Meredith, so much. I'm super, super, super excited. We're going to go and be going to the Bahamas, and I'm going to be diving with sharks. So you better believe you're going to see some pictures, some video of this, uh, living my best life and still training. The gym, the, the gym, the hotel that we're going to has a gym, so we'll be training hard and having a good time at the same time, right? Pl work hard and play hard. Uh, and you know, got to add to that train hard. So all of that's going to be happening on this vacation. Um, and some downtime, I'll get some good reading in, I'll get some good strategizing in for my practice, for the podcast, maybe hopefully meet some amazing people while I'm there. And also relax and spend some time with my beautiful wife. And very excited about that. So appreciate you all. I hope this gave you a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of insight to what it looks like and feels like and sounds like to train for a 100-mile run. And I hope wherever you are in your training that you're inspired and you're inspiring yourself to train harder, to go beyond, to transcend, right? Break free from the mental capacity that you have. Your body can do a lot more than you're limiting yourself to. So I know you can do this. Go out, have a blast, work hard, play hard, train hard. And we'll see you on the next episode of Lifestyle Locker Radio. So wherever and whenever you're listening to this, have a great day, evening, and night. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.